Lutheran Church, and we welcome the guests and visitors that are here with us this morning. A couple notes about the service today. You know, during Lent, we have uh, some of these changes that happen because we don't sing Alleluia during Lent. It's just a, a long-standing tradition, centuries and centuries, and, and we observe that. So in Divine Service 1, which we have today, uh, for the gospel, before the gospel reading, in place of the Alleluia verse is the verse for Lent. Uh, and you'll see it there, return to the Lord our God. And then after the, uh, after the Lord's Supper, instead of the canticle, thank the Lord, uh, we'll sing the Divine Service 1 setting of the Nunc Dimittis. It may be unfamiliar to us because we don't usually sing it. We usually sing, thank the Lord. Anyway, that's what's coming. Now, last week, remember, we didn't stand for the gospel reading because it was pretty long, very long. Today is longer. <laughs> so um, so uh, with all respect to the Lord, we will not ask you to stand for the gospel reading today either. But we will stand now. Our first hymn is number 686. <laughs> We can uh, 
Uh, we begin our service on page 151 in the front part of your hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of reflection both upon our lives and God's word and promises. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue with the intro on page three of our worship folder. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of sorrow lay hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. <clears throat> Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We continue on page 152 with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. We continue on page 156. The Lord be with you. And we pray the collect of the day, um, beginning on page 3. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
for the fifth Sunday in Lent. The Old Testament reading is Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. And he led me among, around among them, and beheld there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, and there were sinews on them, and flesh came upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open up your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for our sin. He condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are on the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit of life, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. <coughs> and if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your immortal bodies through his Spirit 
who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the verse for Lent, found in the bulletin. sisters sent to him, Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going, to, going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he meant that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But, but even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Everyone who believes, who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to, into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. 
And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and his feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We sing hymn number 
We sometimes come to the Lord with that same grief, even especially if it's the grieving of real death, like Martha with Lazarus. Lord, you could have changed this. Is it too late? Martha, looking to Christ, says, yet, even though I know you can get what you want, Jesus, she holds on to this hope in Christ, that Christ is the one who can act. And this is where she brings out of Jesus the good news. I, I know he'll rise again. I'm the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Rather than to say, oh, that's okay, right? Hold on, just be strong. He gives her a strong promise in Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. You know, when we deal with death, we don't know what to say sometimes. We don't know how to talk to someone after when someone they love has died. And that's the same for all of us. Because nothing we say can sometimes matter. We say, I'm so sorry. And we are. And we want to know what else to say. You know the promises of Christ. It's not something in us. It's not something in the grieving. It's not something in the one who has gone. But it is something in Christ. There is our resurrection and our life. Mary, when she comes out, has the same words because they're the same in all of us. Lord, this could have been different. You could have changed this if you had been here. The promise, again, is in Christ. Let's go to the tomb. Let's go face this. But even there, Jesus, we see, shares in the weeping, shares in the dying, shares in the grief because we grieve what we love. We have grief because we do have love in the world. And when that is broken and crushed and torn and whatever, the love, then we know something's missing and there's the grieving in our life. Whether it's the death or the relationship or the trouble in society or the, the things inside me that don't work anymore, whether it's the things that we struggle with and we say this is gone, this is broken, this is torn, this is troubling we feel the grief. We look to the Lord who grieves with us. He shares in the weeping because he shares in the love. And so here is this good news. Is it too late for Martha? Is it too late for Mary to feel any life from Christ? Well, for them it comes to Lazarus. And here's Lazarus, dead. Four days. As we understand it by their custom, maybe there might have accidentally come about life again, you know, among three days that maybe they were mistaken, there was a comatose patient or something like those. But after four days and buried, and life is no longer present. And what is present stinks. And Jesus says, I'll come into that odor. I'll come into that stink. I'll come into where there is no life, and I will bring life again. This good news, this simple good news, Lazarus, come out. In those very words there, life is created, right? God spoke, and things happened. Life is created in the command. Lazarus, have life, and come back to life again. Lazarus, come out. And when life is called from death, Lazarus lives. Was it too late for Lazarus? Was it? Could Jesus have said it's too late? I can't do anything. No, we get to see here the power and glory of God is at work in compassion to bring life back. The church leaders then, after this, in the verses we didn't read, they say, "Oh, this Jesus is too good. He's too powerful. Everybody loves him." And they plot how they can kill Jesus and how they can kill Lazarus again. This is the evil of, of those who were against Jesus were saying, how can we get rid of this man and destroy the evidence that he raises the dead? To destroy the life that was just given again to this man. Is it too late for the Pharisees? No. Jesus brings life. But they reject it. They reject what God can do for them as well. He's offering life from death. His death brings our life. 
his death leads to Easter. Easter is already creeping into our lens here, people, right? Life is coming from death in all of our three lessons here. And Christ is bringing life into the world through his death and resurrection. So is it too late for you? Is it too late for God to do something into your life? Maybe it stinketh. Maybe there's an order about our lives, something that's really not working right. And we say, Lord, you don't want to come into this. It's not good. And yet he comes. Is it too late for God to be in your life with resurrection and life to deal with grief and to say there is hope? Not to take our grief away. Not to say our mourning should be done. But to say there is hope and life again, even in grief. Is it too late to say that relationships can't be restored? Not with the help of God. Is it too late to say that good things can be present even in a dying society and world? Not with Jesus Christ. Is it too late to say that there's no life that can come from death? Not with Christ. He is the resurrection. He is the one who says it's never too late for Christ to come and bring life and healing and hope and forgiveness and eternal life. He is the one to say even in dying there is eternal life for those that are in Christ Jesus. It's never too late for Christ. You might wonder, is it too late for these dry bombs? Apparently not. Is it too late in, the, in Romans 8 for the mind that is hostile to God not with the help of the Holy Spirit is it too late for a body that dies to have life again and salvation and forgiveness and eternity not in Christ Jesus our Lord Amen and now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord Amen we continue on page 158 of our hymnal as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. <laughs> we confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. And he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. Whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, 
In your mercy, O Lord, strengthen uh, every family in this church, strengthen families throughout the world with the love of Christ, with the word of God, with love that helps each other in times of trouble and struggle, with love that endures and nurtures new life for those that are growing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice, O Lord, and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who wear fair office in our land. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need sickness or adversity. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering. rise and sing the offertory on page 159. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many. 
that with cleansed hearts we might prepare joyfully to celebrate the paschal feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen.
understand and say the nunc dimittis on page 165? and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 433.
Again, good morning and welcome to Christ the King Lutheran Church. We uh, welcome all the, the guests and visitors that are here with us today as well. Easter is coming and uh, your attendance is showing. <laughs> uh, let's just rejoice. It is the season. It is the season where we're uh, coming back to remember what's getting ready, uh, what we're getting ready to celebrate. I'd like to direct your attention to the announcements and the announcement page uh, just for uh, a few things, hopefully. Uh, the Easter lilies, uh, we have those every year, obviously, to decorate our sanctuary, to beautify it. If you'd like to help contribute to that, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back, and, and the, the lilies are $9 this year, you know, the economy, right? Um, and uh, then you, if you want to donate those in memory of, or in honor of, or in Thanksgiving, uh, there, you can make a notation for that as well on the sheet back there. Our last... Wednesday service is this week, uh, part of our Lenten services, and so we invite you to come for that as well. Next week is Holy Week, so Palm Sunday and then Monday Thursday with uh, Holy Communion on uh, Thursday, right? And Good Friday services, those uh, evening services are always at 7 o'clock, and then our Easter Sunday service, which we don't have uh, listed here because it's getting ahead of it. Um, our Easter Sunday service, uh, we have the sunrise service at 7, Easter breakfast at 8, the children's activities at 9, and then our regular Easter service at 10 o'clock for that as well. Did I say a.m. somewhere? Okay, all right. Um, the, the other announcements are here are, oh, yes, there is... We had learned this week that there's a family in our community that's just really going on one of those awful hard times. And uh, so a number of people in our community are being able to help out with that. And so we're gonna do a, an in gathering at least up through Easter today and next week and Easter Sunday uh, and let's see if we might just be able to give the, them a helping hand. Uh, currently, if you brought something or left it in the car or whatever, if you have anything, you can just put it by the piano and maybe we'll be able to get a box to put there as a gathering spot uh, for some non-perishable uh, food items. If you bring apples and we wait until Easter to give them out or anything, um, no, just non-perishable items. So the rest of the announcements are there. Uh, I would also like to highlight that um, the Sunday morning Bible class is uh, starting a new topic. So for the last few years, we've just gone, been going over basic Bible stories just the basic Bible literacy. Uh, but by request, we, we were brainstorming ideas. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the women in the Bible and see you know, there's obviously some great ones and there's some villains in there too. Uh, but so we'll enjoy seeing how God has worked and how the story comes through, seeing the, the women in the Bible as well. So I invite you to come to that uh, new uh, topic beginning next Sunday for that as well. I feel like, well, I'm forgetting one more thing, and I see you, Donna. Uh, we have a congregational meeting after church today. I forgot to get that in the bulletin. So all the members are invited to, to stay and take part uh, in the congregational meeting, just the regular business of the church. And Donna? I just want to say there's a sign-up sheet in the back for anybody who wants to bring something for our Easter breakfast. Um, it, it's going to be nice. It'll be great. All right. Thank you, Donna. So there's a sign-up sheet in the back for that as well. Am I missing something or any other comments or questions? Um, Save it for the voters meeting, the congregational meeting, right? So God's blessings on your day and your week. Yeah, I'm going to work with you.